Good morning, guys. Today I'm going to start a book and I'm going to read it in chapters and give it to you a little bit at a time rather than all of it at once, um, just because I think we can do that. So I'm going to read The Magic and the Mummy. It's by Terry Deary. It's illustrated by Helen Fluke and it is published by Picture Window Books. And if you look at the book and you look at the title, Mummies, and if you look here, you can make some predictions about what the book is about. I want to show you something else here. Let it get it there. Let me see. Uh, there is a pronunciation guide in the book and that's going to help me. I may have to go back to it a couple times just to make sure I'm saying things right so you have patience. Chapter 1, House of Death. Neria couldn't sleep. She lay on the cool floor of her room and wiggled with excitement. She whispered in the dark, the house of death. She remembered over and over again what her father had told her the night before. Neria, he said, you are a clever girl. Oh, thank you, father, she muttered and blushed. He hardly ever seemed to notice her. He was a grand priest at the royal temple. He certainly hadn't told her she was clever before. How did he know? He dusted crumbs of bread off his hands and wiped his thin mouth. His serious, dark eyes looked into her. I trust you, he went on. Oh, yes, father, she said quietly. I have a special task for you, he said. Her brothers and sisters fell silent and looked at her. You see the brothers and sisters? Yikes. She was the oldest, and they always knew she was a special girl. She was like a mother to them since their own mother had died a year ago. Their faces were still, but their ears were twitching like hippos on the banks of the Nile. Neria nodded. Tomorrow I am taking you to the house of death with me, the man said. His shaved head glowed in the golden light of the oil lamps, and he looked like a god. Ooh, her youngest brother, Karos, cried. House of death, Neria is going to die. The priest turned his head slowly and looked at his little son. The boy gave a hiccup of fear. <gasps> The house of death is not the place you go to die, my son. It is the place you go after you are dead, at least the place where the great people of Egypt go when they are dead. Sounds like he's a little bit afraid of his dad. The little boy's mouth flew, fell open. Oh, the house of death is where we preserve the bodies of people who have died. <gasps> What's preserve? Carew whispered. Father nodded. If you have a piece of meat and you leave it in the sun, what happens to it? Um, the cat would steal it, the little boy replied. Or... The jackals would come in from the desert and gobble it up. Father closed his eyes for a moment and took a slow breath. If you put it on the roof where the cats and the jackals couldn't get it. I think he's frustrated with him. <laughs> Carew wiggled. The birds would eat it. The priest held the table so tightly his knuckles turned white. Neria tried to shake her head to tell her brother to close his mouth before their father lost his temper. At last, their father said, If we put the meat in a cage and close the door so that the animals and the birds could not eat it, what would happen to it? Carew smiled. Then I would open the door of the 
cage and I would eat it. No, you would not, their father shouted. The children jumped as if a Nile crocodile had snapped its jaws suddenly shut. I will tell you what would happen to the meat. It would become slimy and very smelly. It would be covered in flies, and the flies would lay their eggs. The eggs would hatch into maggots, and the maggots would eat the meat. <gasps> Do they like slimy, smelly meat? The boy gasped. They love it, father said. He turned back to Naria. People like us would be like pieces of meat when we died. We'd rot and smell and be eaten by maggots. That is why we turn people into mummies. I know, Father, Naria said. That's what we do in the house of death. We make mummies. He lowered his voice. We are going to get very busy in the house of death someday soon. I need some extra help. I need someone who could learn quickly. Someone I can trust. I have chosen you, Naria. The girl felt a warm tingle in her cheeks. Thank you, Father she said, lowering her dark eyes. In the quiet of the room, little Carew's voice sounded like a reed pipe. Will I be made into a mummy, father, or will I be eaten by maggots? Father glared at the boy. If you do not close your monkey mouth, you will be chopped up and fed to the crocodiles. <gasps> Carew cried. He jumped to his feet in fear, took a step backwards, and fell over the cat. The cat squawked, the boy squeaked, and the children tried to hide their laughter. Get to bed now, father roared, or I will feed you to the pharaoh's own pet crocodile. I don't think he means it. Carew fled, his little legs pattering faster than his thumping heart. He clutched his favorite rag ball to his mouth. Naria was sure that father's tight mouth was trying not to laugh. At last, he looked around the table. In fact, you can all go to bed, he said. Sleep well, Naria. You have a busy day ahead tomorrow. But Naria didn't sleep well. She hardly slept at all. Her cat crept onto her blanket and purred like a mountain lion. She stroked it and whispered, The house of death. I'm going to the house of death, Catkins. The cat purred. At last, the black night turned to darkest gray, and she knew Horus the hawk god was opening his eye, the eye that was the sun. It was time to go. Here she is going to bed. That is the end of chapter one. I look forward to reading chapter two and reading the rest of the book. I miss you guys. Okay, get out, get some sun, read a good book.